Hello, it's Bushhawk53 here, and today I'm here to talk about this box. Now, you're probably wondering what it is. I may have uh, mentioned what this is in the title. But what this is, is a little box that I take with me in the car when I'm geocaching. It's an old metal toolbox that I found rusting away in the shed, and what I've done is I've just spray painted it in camouflage paint, just uh, geocaching style, pretty much. And um, what's in here, let's open this up. You may not be able to see, I'll just reposition the camera, but pretty much this is a kit full of things that I may need when I'm out geocaching. Okay, so from this angle, you can see inside the kit a lot better. Pretty much what's in here is a collection of things that I feel that I may need when I'm out in the field. Uh, things that I can help replace or repair geocaches with, uh, just to lend a helping hand. I've also got a few other things in there uh, that will help me. So I'm going to spread this stuff out on a table and I'm going to go into detail on what these things are and why they're there. So I'll see you shortly. Okay, so you can see that I've laid all the stuff out on the table now. Uh, and I've organised them into little sections. I've got geocache containers. I've got geocache uh, maintenance. I've got swag and trackables. And then I've just got tools of the trade. So, I want to go into detail uh, into each of these items. So stay tuned. Okay, so here we have a selection of geocache containers that I take around with me. Uh, now, I take these around with me just in case I'm out and about and I find a really, really nice park that nobody's hidden a geocache in. And I might hide one of these for myself. Another instance, and probably one of the most common instances that I'd use these, is if there's another geocacher and they may be on a holiday overseas or interstate and they're not getting back for a few months and one of their geocaches goes missing or gets severely damaged. Uh, now, instead of having that geocache get disabled and then possibly archived at a later date, I'll do a good deed and replace them. Um, so, these containers, various different sizes, uh, they're all pretty good containers uh, so first off, this Tupperware one, uh, well it's actually a Systema container, it's a brand from New Zealand, you find them in New Zealand and Australia, uh, not sure if you get them anywhere else, but pretty much like a Tupperware container, nice, good seal on there, click lock, uh, fairly cheap, just find them in supermarkets, and I'll spray paint that in camouflage colour, and inside there, I keep whole bunch of micro logbooks and I downloaded these from a website and then you just cut them out and staple them together and it's a really handy website they've got a variety of different sizes so I'll put the link down in the description for I got those from because they're very good next I've got just an average key hider uh, these aren't very waterproof but if you hide them properly uh, like under a scoreboard or under a bench they're very, very good because they have inbuilt magnets that tend to be very strong. Inside here, just have a little logbook there. I've put an official geocache sign on there just to uh, keep it quite nice. I was actually going to hide that for myself once, but there was a puzzle final too close. Next, I've got a big metal container from the Osmega. It's got a nice rubber seal around here and... Uh, a lot of space inside there, you can fit some small swag, and logbook and other items. There's also this container that I bought at the Osmega, and uh, this one is pretty much bomb proof. You can drive a car over this no problems. It opens at both ends, but it's made out of such solid metal. And uh, also, I haven't tested this, but these are actually meant to be very, very waterproof too. Uh, they've got a little rubber seal here on each end. Um, but the person who sold it to me uh, at the stall said that he actually tried this uh, in a swimming pool or a glass of water or something and left it down there for about a day and no water got in. So I uh, haven't tested him on that, but uh, I might do that. Then I've just got your normal 
magnetic uh, ground speak standard nano. And uh, just a little rubber seal here, tiny little logbook inside. Very easy to hide, uh, very difficult to find, and they definitely be uh, very creative when hiding these. So that finishes it up for the geocache containers. Let's move on to the geocache maintenance materials. Okay, so now we get on to our geocache maintenance materials. Now, geocache maintenance is really the reason why I created this kit. So many times I've been out geocaching and I've seen a geocache with a damaged or wet logbook or a pen that doesn't work, Ziploc bag that's been all torn up, or even a crack or a hole that can be fixed with some electrical tape. So, pretty much just compiled a bunch of materials that uh, can be pretty handy, mainly for signing the log. So first, I've got this electrical tape, as I explained before, great for fixing any uh, cracks or holes in the container, uh, if you don't have a replacement for it. Uh, this is just always good to uh, do it up, keep it waterproof, duct tape will work too, and uh, yeah, that's always very handy to have around. Next off, I've got a very large collection of pens. Um, in a cold climate, pencils are probably better, uh, but here it never really gets below freezing, so there's no chance of the uh, ink freezing up, and uh, yeah, it's just a lot easier to maintain than pencils that need to be sharpened every now and then. These, just sort of leave them there and forget. Uh, quite a few times you come across geocaches that either don't have writing implements in them, or uh, it's broken. So these are always handy just to uh, keep in the geocache in case anybody's forgotten uh, to bring a pen or a pencil. Next up, just got a Ziploc bag full of Ziploc bags. <laughs> Pretty handy way to store them. Just the miniature size. I find that works well for uh, the majority of logbooks, and it'll fit in mint tins, and it'll also fit a uh, large notepad size logbook. Any logbook bigger, uh, it's a bit more difficult to find those sorts of Ziploc bags, but I just keep these small ones here. Next off, I've got notepad after notepad after notepad. <laughs> I've got Tons and tons of these, even a packet of these uh, groovy little multicolored ones. It's always good to have quite a few of these. Uh, for a while, I was actually using notepads to write down the list of which geocaches that I'd found in that day. Uh, now I type them out into my phone. So all of these I use for replacing logbooks because quite often, especially in some of the bigger geocaches, logbooks get damp, moldy. Not very good to write on, and uh, it's always good just to uh, leave a logbook there. Now, last of all for this section, I've got this little container here that could be used uh, as an actual hide. But when you undo this, inside we've got a little baggie of uh, nano logbooks. We've got six in there. And we've got, just rolled around the edge, some more of those micro logbooks. So, uh, that does it for the geocache maintenance uh, materials. Next, I'll go on to trackables and swag. Okay, next up here, we've got uh, the trackables and swag that I was talking about. And so, in this box, uh, I don't really trade much stuff anymore. Uh, when I first started the channel, I was quite into just trading something from each and every geocache as a bit of a souvenir. But after I've found over a thousand, uh, uh, my bedroom would probably be absolutely full of toy horses and dogs and cars and little things like that. So now I only trade if I'm going to take a travel bug or two, or unless I find something really, really cool. So what I've pretty much got here, I uh, haven't really traded these much, just got them a few months back, little miniature highlighters. Uh, quite a few people like stationary items and geocaches, I've heard. Uh, so I got a few of those, just one packet, and I uh, got two of those left. You can see I don't really trade much, that's lasted me for many, many months. <laughs> also, what I've started doing 
is going to the camping store and buying little reels of paracord. And what I've done is I've uh, made these little keychains. Uh, they're quite quick and easy to make. They take about uh, uh, five to ten minutes each. I've put a key ring on the end and with a rubber band I've attached a laminated card just with my uh, geocaching name on it. So this is pretty much like a signature item. It's something that people can use to tie onto a backpack, even a keychain if they want to. It's quite big, uh, but mainly to put on the backpack. And uh, they can just snip that tag off. That's just so they know who left it. Snip that tag off and they can use it without having my silly geocaching name <laughs> pasted all over their backpack. Next up, just got a little pile of uh, metal trinkets that I found at some craft store. Here it's got a little motorbike and uh, a few things like feathers, things like that. Uh, haven't used those at all. <laughs> I don't think I'd get them again because uh, they're just sort of a bit small and not really worth trading for. So I've decided not to leave them there uh, in any geocaches. But here I've got two little sleeves for geocoins. Uh, these actually belong to geocoins of my own that I have in my bedroom. But I'm never going to send those around the world, so instead I'm keeping these uh, in case I find a geocoin that's in need of a little protective sleeve uh, that might be getting a bit damaged, and so I'll put them in one of these. I'd probably take that little card out before I did so. Uh, but yeah, that's that. I've got this mint tin over here, I forgot to put that in the shot. Actually, it's got a whole bunch, whoa, a whole bunch of uh, copy tags for my travel bugs. Now I've sent quite a few travel bugs out into the wild. It's getting quite uh, thick, a large amount of these. Uh, but I just put these in the mint tin to keep them all safe in one place. Last of all, this container here, it's probably one of the most handiest things I have in this kit. It's where I keep all the trackables that come into my possession. It's pretty much my inventory of travel bugs. So at the moment, it's just got three of my own in there. And I haven't got anybody else's at the moment. But I started using this after I accidentally misplaced somebody's geocoin in the house for about two weeks. And I felt so bad because I got this geocoin and then a day or two later we did this big clean up of my bedroom just sort of got rid of a whole bunch of stuff and uh, put stuff away in cupboards and everything and I managed to misplace this really cool geocoin and I felt so bad like I was looking absolutely everywhere and I couldn't find this thing and it went missing for about two weeks until one day I found it deep down in my cupboard in this box I was like oh my goodness Thank God that I found that, and uh, I instantly went out and put it in a geocache. <laughs> and uh, after that experience, very, very stressful, very awkward, don't want to do that again. So whenever I get a travel bug, I put it in here. It keeps it all in one place, and I keep this in the car, in the container, so I know where every single travel bug that I've got is at, uh, at all times, so I don't manage to misplace one. So at the moment, just got a few of my own. There's a little Oreo geocoin. Not going to show you the troll code. I've got a little ground speak Lego man. And one of my first travel tags that I got is this little guy, Snowman. And he used to be on my keychain, but he got a bit bent and scratched up. So he just stays in here to keep safe now. So that's the end for the uh, trackables and swag. The last section that I'm going to go over is tools of the trade. Okay, so as you can see here, in this section of the kit, there's not very much. This is stuff that I have and that's useful for geocaching that I may need at any cache that I go to, but I don't use it very often. So I used to use this torch quite a bit. It's very heavy, very big, and um, it's not, it's quite bright but not overly bright. I've taken to using my head torch now. So that sort of left this without a use. 
But I carry this around in my kit. I always make sure there's batteries in it. And uh, just in case my head torch runs out, gets smashed or something, I can always use this. And um, it's very heavy, uh, nice metal there, so <laughs> if you're in a weird dodgy area or if you're scared of animals, you can certainly whack something over the head with that for self-defense. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, going on, we've got tweezers. Now, I don't use these very much. I don't uh, really find many geocaches with their logs stuck in. Uh, but when I do, these are absolutely essential. So these are very, very strong metal, uh, fine tipped, so you can just sort of get it into a nano even and just sort of pull, pull the log out without damaging it. And uh, it's definitely an essential tool to have in any geocaching kit. This here is stamp refill ink. Now, I got myself a stamp quite a few years back that I sign all of my logs with. Uh, it's a whole lot quicker, especially on power trails, you just stamp it and keep going. Uh, I've also added a little area in the stamp, you were able to design your own, and uh, I can write the date in there too. But sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But, never had to refill it, but the day that I do, it's in the car, in the kit, ready. Okay, so this last thing in the kit. Some of you may know what this is, some of you may not. But this is a little log rolling tool for nanos. Now, I don't use this very much, uh, but it's very, very useful, especially when you find a nano. Now, thank goodness, nanos aren't that common around this area. But when I do find one, these are very useful to have. What you do might be able to see this there's a little slot down the side and you slot the paper in and you just sort of give it a bit of pressure with your fingers and then just roll it roll it roll it roll it roll it and soon sure enough you would have rolled the log really nice and neat you just pull it off the top put it back in the geocache and there we go and so you don't have to stand around for eight years trying to roll a nano log it's especially good when you've got cold fingers when it's cold outside uh, your fingers are a bit numb, can't really control them as well as you used to, and um, yeah, it's just great to have around. Okay, so last off, I thought I'd just show you uh, a close-up of the inside of this box. Very, very strong metal, and uh, what we've got here, we've got two main compartments, uh, compartments divided up. I've painted the inside as well, just to stop rust. Um, so these I keep mainly the big torch, uh, the containers, all that sort of stuff. And up here, uh, you may not be able to see those as well, but we've got little divided tray here that uh, moves when you open and close the lid. And that's where I keep most of the small stuff and the log box. Uh, so yeah, very handy, keeps stuff organized and uh, doesn't roll about when you're driving along. Also, you may have noticed inside the lid here, got a few stickers that I've picked up along the way. Keep calm and find the geocache. There's a geocaching logo. Got a GoPro sticker uh, that came with my GoPro camera. And then the window sticker from the Osmega 2014 that gave us access to uh, go to and from the uh, showgrounds. Okay, so thanks so much for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry it was a bit long, but I just wanted to go in depth uh, and into a lot of detail uh, as to what was contained in this kit. So, if I inspired you to make one at home, uh, good luck with that. And if you've got any suggestions for improvements that I could make, anything that you think uh, I might be able to remove from that, uh, leave it down in the comments. So thanks for watching. Really hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next video. Bye bye.